Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more of the Canadian Intermediate Math Competition, or the CIMC. This one's aimed at uh, grade nine, grades 9 and 10, that sort of area of mathematics. If you're looking for something a little harder, the CSMC from the year 2015, you can take a look. Uh, I should have it up either now or a little bit in the future. And we're up to question number 5. Still in part A, so we still just care about our final answer, but let's take a look. Determine the largest positive integer n with n less than 500, okay, for which 6048 times 28 to the n, so that's the number that we want, the positive integer we want, is a perfect cube, okay? And then they explain what a perfect cube is, just in case somebody hasn't heard that particular expression. So, we're given... Uh, 6,048, that's definitely a factor of our number, and then 28 to the n, okay? So what we want to do is figure out, well, how does the n factor into here? How does the n work in? And when I see exponents, and I'm told that I want a perfect cube, my first instinct, and it might not be your first instinct, but my first instinct is prime factorization, okay? Every single number uh, uh, positive integer, I guess. The, the reals don't have this. But every single positive integer can be uniquely, and that's the key, uniquely written as uh, a product of prime powers. So, for example, 30 it can be written uniquely as 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 1 times 5 to the 1. Okay? Primes and powers. 2 is a prime, power is 1. Uh, 12 is 2 to the 2 times 3 to the 1, that sort of stuff. So every number can be uniquely written like this. And the really nice thing is, if your number is a cube, all the exponents of the primes will be multiples of 3. If you're a square, all the uh, exponents will be multiples of 2. And if you're a fifth power, all of them will be multiples of 5. If you're a sixth power, all the exponents of each of the primes in your prime factorization will be multiples of 6. That's the only way it happens. And that's the property we're going to use here. So we grab our pen. And uh, we head on over to our paper. So, so we have uh, 6048 times 28 to the n. So uh, 6,048, what are the prime numbers there? Well, if I want the prime numbers, I can either grab my calculator and start working things out, or what I can do is I can just chip off little primes. So I notice 6,048 is, uh, there's a light too. So usually what I write is 6,048 divided by 2. Well, that's going to be 30 and then uh, 24. Well, I notice that also has a factor of 2, so we'll divide by that. So that's 15, 12, that's got another 2, and now uh, we're getting into danger territory here, but I think that should be uh, 7, 56. I'll know at the end, because I can just grab my calculator and multiply this all out. So we still have another 2, uh, so the 7 turns into a 350, and the 5 turns into 28, so... Uh, 378, I believe, should be what we want here. That's still got a 2. So we'll get uh, 36, 18, and then another 18. So that's uh, 189. So now we don't have 2s, but I can see 1 plus 8 plus 9 is 18. So we're going to have a factor of 3 here. 63. And another factor of 3 here. So that's going to be uh, 21. Another factor of 3 is, and then we get 7. So 6048, if I'm not mistaken, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2 to the power of 5. And 1, 2, 3, so 3 to the power of 3. And 7 to the power of 1. Now, I could, exp I could multiply that out, or I could grab a calculator and just double check that, however I want to do it. Uh, so 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 32, times 3 times 3 times 3. So we're looking at 864 times uh, 7. 
864 times 7. Come on. Keep accidentally pressing one wrong button. 6048. So I know I've prime factored my given constant number correctly. Now how about 28 to the power n? Okay. Well, 28, uh, you can easily work that out. So it's got a 2, so that's 14. So that's another 2, and that's a 7. So 28 is 2 to the 2 times 7 to the 1. So if I did 28 to the n, that'd be 2 to the 2, 7 to the 1, all to the power n. Well, I can break this up into 2 to the 2 to the n, because remember, exponents, they, they, uh, they break over addition, or sorry, multiplication. And then when I do something, some uh, exponent, some power to another power, I can multiply these. So that's 2 to the 2n times 7 to the 1 times n, which is 7 to the n. So if I combine these, I have a prime factorization of the number I'm talking about, the number that I want to ensure is a part of the cube. So we'll just combine these. That's 2 to the 5, 3 to the 3, 7 to the 1, and then 2 to the 2n, 7 to the n. Well, if they have a common base, we can add them. So that's 2 to the 2n plus 5. 3 to the 3, 7 to the n plus 1. Okay? So this number here is a perfect cube if and only if each exponent is a multiple of 3. So that means if each exponent is a multiple of 3, it's a cube. And if it's a cube, which we want it to be, each of these exponents has got to be a multiple of 3. That's what the if and only if means. If you have one thing, you have to have the other. So perfect cube, you got to have exponents are multiple of 3. If you have each exponent is a multiple of 3, then you must be looking at a perfect cube. So that's the way the if and only if the statement works. Well, 3 to the 3, that's, I mean, that's got an exponent of 3. So we need 3 to divide 2n plus 5. We need 3 to divide 3, which we kind of already know works. And we need 3 to divide n plus 1. So this one, it already works. Clearly, 3 divides 3, so it gets a nice little check mark. But we need to make 3 divide 2n plus 5. And we also need to make 3 divide n plus 1. Okay. So, <clears throat> what can we do here? Well, uh, 3 divides 2n plus 5. Multiplicity, uh, multi, uh, being a multiple of 3, does not change when we add or subtract multiples of 3. So 3 dividing that implies that 3 divides 2n plus 5 minus 3, and that's the same as 3 divides 2n plus 2. Okay? So 3 divides that, if and only if 3 divides that. But now, we can take out a factor of 2 here. Okay? Now, primes have this very special property. If you're looking at a prime number P, and you know that P divides AB, then either P divides A or P divides B, sometimes both. 3 is a prime. And 3 is supposed to divide 2 times n plus 1. Okay? 
but we know that 3 doesn't divide 2. So therefore, 3 divides n plus 1. Okay. So this top one will work. 3 divides 2n plus 5 exactly when 3 divides n plus 1. And the bottom one works when 3 divides n plus 1. So really what we're looking for is, so we want n to be 1 less than a multiple of 3. Okay, And we also want n to be less than 500. So how about we start looking for candidates for, for n? We could have, uh, well, we can't have 500, but we could have 499, or 498, or 497, or 496. And we could keep going backwards, but I think you'll find that we see our answer really quickly. So which of these is a multiple of 3? Well, a really quick way to tell whether or not something's a multiple of 3 we can add the digits. If you have an integer, a positive integer, and you add up the digits, and the, di the sum of the digits is a multiple of three, and the number you started with is a multiple of three. Okay, so that's a nice little divisibility rule for three. So let's apply it here. Four plus nine is 13, plus another nine is 22. That's not divisible by three. Okay, so that one doesn't work. How about uh, 498? Well, 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 8 is 21. So this one is divisible by 3. Well, we want n to be 1 less than a multiple of 3. So 497 works. Okay? Alternatively, we could say, well, these are our candidates for n. So these are our possible n. We could keep going further back if we wanted to. We want n plus 1 to be the multiple of 3. So what's n plus 1? Well, 1 more than that is 497. 1 more than that is 498. 1 more than that is 499. 1 more than that is 500. And now we check, well, which one of these is the multiple of 3? This is the highest one. So either way, you slice it n is going to be 497, and that's the biggest number we can get. We can't even verify this on our calculator, unfortunately, although something we could do is uh, just uh, do a little double check that we do need n plus 1 to be a multiple of 3. So all our math says that whenever n plus 1 is a multiple of 3, then uh, 6048 times 28 to the n should also be uh, a cube. Okay, So what we could do is we could just test that n plus 1 being a multiple of 3 thing with a smaller number. So um, if I take n equals 2, n equals 2, 2 plus 1 is a multiple of 3. So by our reasoning, if n is equal to 2, then I should get that 6048 times 28 to the power of 2 should be a multiple, or it should not, not be a multiple of 3, should be a perfect cube. And we can check that. We can make sure that our reasoning about n plus 1 is correct. Because once we have that, this nice list tells us that n should be uh, 497. So how about we just do a little check. So 28 squared times 6048. And I get 4741632. I can't tell off the top of my head if that is a, uh, a perfect cube. But surely somewhere on this uh, calculator, I should get a nice little cube root button. Yeah, cube root. Uh, had it a second ago. Hmm, this doesn't have a back button. Maybe one of my other ones has a nicer one. Uh, does this have a cube root function on it? Pro tip when you're doing a contest, if you're looking for buttons on your calculator for too long, you're probably wasting time. You don't want to waste time, especially on parts, part A 
There's a cube root button. Okay, cube root. Uh, 6048 times 28 squared. 168. Okay, so it turned out when n is equal to 2 and plus 1 is 3, that's a multiple of 3. And when, when we take n equals 2, we do in fact get to that expression that we were given at the start. It does give us a perfect cube. So we have more confidence in our reasoning that n plus 1 being a multiple of 3 is exactly what we need. And with that, we very, we're very, very quickly able to get n is equal to 497 as our answer. Okay. So that was question five. We have one more to go. Question number six, that's the last final answer one, and then we'll move into the written style questions. But we have a whole other question to get through, and we'll take a look at that in the next video. So join me for question six on the 2015 Intermediate Math Contest in the next video.